Welcome to Adventures in Mathematics. I'm your instructor, Alan Carlisle. Well, we have a picture here of a necklace hung between two nails. And uh, we see that it takes a very interesting shape starting from the upper left. We see that it looks very much like a parabola. The only force acting upon this chain, as we'll call it, is the force of gravity. Now, for many years, scientists thought that this was a parabola. But it wasn't until 1691 that a mathematician by the name of Leibniz and a couple of other of his cohorts discovered the true nature of this curve to be anything other than a parabola. And that's what we're going to look at today. The derivation of the equation of this curve of a chain or rope or cable suspended between two points. A curve that's formed only by the force of gravity. Okay. Before we can get into a deep discussion on the derivation of the equation of this curve, we're going to have to go back and do a little bit of a review in basic physics. The most fundamental uh, equation in physics developed by Sir Isaac Newton is the very famous F equals MA which is simply force is equivalent to the mass of an object times the acceleration. And what this means is the amount of force necessary to accelerate a mass M is given by the equation F equals MA. This equation is illustrated here on Earth in its equivalent form W equals MG where W equals the weight of an object which is nothing more than the force of a mass M due to the acceleration due to gravity which in the metric system is 9.8 meters per second per second. If you were to drop an object near the Earth, it would accelerate at a rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. The mass is a constant. Okay. The mass of an object is constant, whether it's near the Earth or out in space. Now, force and its equivalent weight are vector quantities. Vectors can be indicated, uh, if you recall, using arrows, the direction of the force, shown as the direction of the arrow, the magnitude of the, f of the vector, or the magnitude of the force in this case, is the length of the arrow. So if we have a mass, which is illustrated here by a sphere rolling down an incline, the force of gravity is vertical. However, it is constrained by the incline to roll in this direction. So the force is not going to be the same. Now, when I say the force is not going to be the same, I'm talking about the force in this direction. So we have different components uh, on this mass due to one force, the force of gravity. We also have what's called the normal force, which is the force perpendicular to the incline.
Okay, the name of the curve that we're studying is the catenary. It comes from the Latin term catena, which is Latin for chain. Now, the vector forces along the catenary uh, we will refer to as tension, okay, or the tension forces. Here is any point P on the catenary. The very lowest point indicated here by the laser, or the minimum point, we will call that point A. At any point on the catenary, we have three basic forces. We have two tension forces. One is, of course, the force due to the pull of gravity on that, on that point. And by the way, that uh, is caused because of the weight of this portion of the catenary. All points along the catenary or the chain from point P to point A. That entire mass of the chain is pulling downward. Okay? But also we have as a component of that force the tangential tension which is indicated here and is the hypotenuse of the right triangle formed by the three vector forces. The tension at point A is horizontal in direction. And it turns out that every point along the catenary has a horizontal uh, tension um, vector force that are all the same. In other words, this horizontal tension vector is exactly the same magnitude at point A. That's an important idea as we develop this analysis. The fact that the horizontal uh, vector component to all these vector forces is exactly the same at all points on the catenary. And the reason for that is there are no other vec vector forces horizontal uh, or in the horizontal direction on this catenary. The only force acting upon the entire catenary is the vertical force due to gravity. Okay, we're going to, we're going to call T, capital T, the tangential tension at point P. So here's our point P. Point A is the minimum point on the uh, catenary, point A. The red arrow is represented here, uh, <coughs> a representation of the tangential tension, or the tension that's tangent to the catenary at point P. It is the hypotenuse of a right triangle formed by the vertical, right, the vertical uh, tension, or the vertical force, I should say, caused by the force of gravity. And, of course, this is the horizontal tension, which we had previously mentioned, is the same at all points, in magnitude, that is, uh, at all points on the catenary. We're going to call that T naught, or T sub zero. Notice that uh, angle theta is here. Therefore, by definition of, of cosine, we have that T naught 
is equal to t times cos theta. We have the vertical component being t sine theta is also given by u times s times g where u is the mass per unit length of the chain and s is the total length of the chain from point A to point P. Multiplying those two together will give you the total mass of the chain from point P to point A, the total mass of that much of the chain. And from our force equal MA formula that was presented at the beginning of this lesson, we have the force is equal to U times S, uh, <coughs> which is mass, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is G. That is T sine theta. Now, two equations come out of this analysis from the Pythagorean relationship we have quantity USG squared plus the horizontal uh, tension squared is equal to the tangential tension squared. Also, we have that the tangent by definition, tangent of theta, is equal to USG, which is the vertical force, divided by the horizontal force or tension. It is the second equation that we're going to be working with. Okay, having established the physics aspect of this problem, we're now ready to get into the derivation of the equation. We need to emphasize again that the horizontal vector force or tension at point A, which is indicated by the symbol T naught is the same at each point on the catenary due to the fact that the only outside force acting on the mass is gravity, which is a vertical force. This will allow us to introduce a constant, we're going to call it A, and it is equal to this horizontal tension force, T naught, divided by the mass per unit length times the acceleration due to gravity so that equations 1 and 2 become tangential vector T is equal to uh, the quantity U times G multiplied times the square root of S squared plus A squared from the Pythagorean relationship and the all-important S equals a times the tangent of theta, our intrinsic equation of the catenary. Okay, from our intrinsic equation, S equals A times tangent of theta. Uh, and by the way, let's remember that angle theta is formed uh, by the tangential component of the forces and uh, the horizontal x-axis, which allows us to say that the derivative at any point uh, of the function y with respect to x, dy by dx, is equal to tangent theta and is also equal to s over a from our intrinsic equation. This allows us to come to a di uh, differential equation. Uh, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to s over a. Recall a is the only variable in this situation. And to express this in rectangular coordinates, 
have to take the derivative of both sides again. We have the second derivative of y with respect to x, which can be rewritten as the derivative of y prime, where y prime is the first derivative, is equal to 1 over a times ds by dx, the derivative of s with respect to x. Now, this uh, allows us, using a very uh, important result in calculus, to go further by using the fact that the uh, element of length along a curve, ds, is given by dx times the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. So now we have the derivative of the first derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1 over a times ds by dx. After substituting, uh, we get the differential equation that we see here in red, which can be easily solved using separation of variables dividing both sides by the radical, collecting like terms, and so forth. We get that expression, look at it carefully. And if we integrate both sides, we get something very interesting. The hyperbolic sign, the inverse actually of the hyperbolic sign, the arc hyperbolic sign of y prime equals 2x over a. You can verify this with the uh, table of integrals, any table of standard integrals. Therefore, y prime is a hyperbolic sign of x over a. Now we have the first derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the hyperbolic sine of x over a, which becomes, upon uh, uh, integrating again, if, as you see here, giving us our final result, y is equal to a times the hyperbolic cosine of x over a plus some constant c. And we're going to choose C so that the lowest point of the catenary will be A units above the origin. Therefore, we have our result, final result, in rectangular coordinates. The equation of a catenary is Y equals A times hyperbolic cosine of X over A. Hope you've enjoyed this analysis. See you back again on Adventures in Mathematics.